Today we will be looking at the 1968 Polar Lights Plastic Batmobile Model Kit. But before getting into all of it, I'm Trevor and welcome to the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Picture this, you've just discovered a model car you know nothing about. Or perhaps you've owned these model cars in the past and you're just here to reminisce. Either way, we feature classic plastic, television and movie cars, domestic kits, new releases, imports, and model kits made by companies lost to time. If that sounds like a channel that you totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. The 1960s DC comic book Batmobile includes Batman and Robin figures, over 110 precision pieces, detailed engine and chassis, officially licensed by DC Comics. This model is a 125th scale all plastic assembly kit for ages 10 to adult. One thing that was cool about these older Polar Lights kits is that they offered this transparent window on the bottom of the box so that you could see what color the plastic was inside. Another great addition was this really awesome little collector's book showing you all the different model kits that came out in that year from Polar Lights. I like to go over the instruction sheet first in these model kit unboxing videos and that's just so that you can see how the model goes together on paper and if you're actually missing these instructions it's always good to have a backup which is what I try to provide in these videos. The Polar Lights instructions come in English on the front and French on the back if you're living in French-speaking Canada. Right off the bat we have our painting suggestions here and it says for the engine to choose gloss red, gloss blue or gloss orange with the steel transmission. The parts 4, 7 and 14 are aluminum. Parts 8, 9, 22, 24 flat black. Parts 15 and 16 are flat rust. Part 17 gloss white or gloss orange. Part 11, 12, 20, 21, 23 is gloss black. The interior, color choice for seats, headrests, and upholstered door panels are open to the builder. No definitive colors are seen in the comic books. You may choose to use flat black, flat dark blue, flat gray, even deep red or burgundy. Interior floor is steel. Part 71 is steel. Part 82 is silver. Part 83, gloss red. Part 80, or 76 and 80. Gloss black with silver details. And on the chassis, parts 34, 30, or 32, 33, 43, 45, and 102 are silver or aluminum. Parts 47 is gloss yellow. Parts 25, 28, 29, 38 are steel. Parts 26, 27, 30, 31, 36, 37, 39, 40, 41, 42, 103, satin or gloss black. Now it says figures, reference box, front, or 1960s Batman comic, DC comic books. Uh, Batman, gray shirt and tights, black trunks, blue cowl, cape, gloves, and boots. Yellow oval on chest emblem with black bat, yellow utility belt, and only the exposed lower face is flesh colored. Robin, face exposed, arms and legs are flesh colored. Black mask, dark brown hair, yellow cape, green shirt, sleeves, trunks, gloves, and boots. Red vest with a black circular emblem containing a yellow R on the upper left side. Here's the decal instructions. So this model does come with decals where the diecast version did not. It says place decals in position on hood and instrument panel as shown. So here it is all here. Here's our illustration for assembling our engine block. And you can see that the engine block is molded in two halves with the transmission in the back. Here we've got our intake manifold, our distributor, our coil, our carburetor, our air cleaner. And then we have our cylinder head and valve cover, as well as over here with the same. Then our starter motor, our transmission pan on the back, upper radiator hose, oil pan. We've got our exhaust manifolds here. Then we have our fuel filter there front timing cover. We've got a power steering pump and an alternator as well. And uh, maybe the alternator is over there. Actually, what's the third one? Air conditioner, perhaps. And then we also have our fan down below. Now it does say you can paint this engine any color, but what I do believe is this is a Ford motor, probably a Windsor or one of those. 
or Cleveland actually. So here I would paint it as a Ford engine blue. Next up we have the assembly of the interior. And what makes this nice is the addition of the Batman and Robin figures, which you can see all exploded out above here. And there's a lot of components to them. So we've got Robin's back here, uh, the back of his cape, I guess, and then his actual back, his arm, his body and legs, and then the other arm, head front and head back, with Batman again, the cape back. Then we've got his back, back with legs, his front with legs, and both of his arms there, the head and the back of his head as well. Then we've got the upper cap for the dome, the steering wheel with column, the front dashboard, we've got that light that goes in front there. Then we've got our door panel, the telephone, the gear stick lever, and the fire extinguisher, as well as our pedals being mounted here. And then we've got the other door panel and the seats, which will be glued in place as well. Next up, we have the chassis. And this has that cross frame, very much like the old 50s Fords. Now, let's go way over here. So we've got a bat emblem, a tire, the wheel, and then we've got a backing plate here, as well as the rear axle and the differential cover. And then the backing plate, the wheel, the tire, and the bat spinner. Make sure you don't lose the wheel, because we know that if the Batmobile loses the wheel, Joker gets away. So again, we've got our chassis down here. And then we've got a spring and a shackle, I believe, that number 41 is. And then we've got our frame and the shock absorbers. We've got these mufflers with tailpipes. And again, another spring and a shackle block. And then in the front, we've got the bat spinner, the tire, the wheel. And then we've got a disc brake right here. We also have the spindles and the coil springs, as well as the upper A arms with the tie rod attached. And then here's some more muffler extensions, which will go into the exhaust manifolds on the engine. And then we've got our drive shaft as well. So again, a really wonderful looking undercarriage, which should be easy and fun to build. Here we have the completion of the chassis step, which shows our chassis, our inner fender aprons, as well as the firewall, the brake cylinder, the engine being glued into place with the radiator and the radiator support wall, as well as the upper radiator hose. Next up, we have the body and the final assembly all in one. So here you can see all the lights and bezels being glued up into place, as well as our hood up underneath. There are the front two windshields. And then we've got our door latches being glued in place here as well, followed by the back bezels here. There are the red taillights, which go into the tops of the fins and the rear bumper, I guess you would call that sort of a bumperette sort of deal. So then that would all go down onto the chassis. And this chassis, of course, is not fully shown. There is the interior bucket also put into place here in this step. And then the wheels and everything else would be on from previous steps. So once this is all together, you will have your finished Batmobile. And it says you can display your new Batmobile model in a prominent place. Riddle me this, Batman. Which two DC supervillains were reintroduced from the 1940s comics into the 1960s comments? Be the first to answer this question in the comment section down below, and your comment will be pinned to the top of the comment section. <laughs> now we'll begin our look at our plastic parts by reviewing the body itself. And again, you can see this is really wonderful. We've got the sunken door latches up top, as well as this little grill here, and the headrest going all the way back into the trunk lid, which is really cool. Also has the opening trunk lines going up into those headrests, and the latch down below to open the trunk. Really excellent work from a side profile. I love those big fins and the nose coming down. There is a belt line right in here, which I do believe you could paint red if you wanted, and then go up around here to make it look sort of like the TV Batmobile, then do red up into here. I've seen this done in different ways. If you actually Google the car, you'll see that there's a light blue version, a dark blue version, like a navy blue, as well as a black version. 
up underneath there are some little mold marks in here, but nothing you couldn't get rid of with some sandpaper or a number 16 hobby blade. Then looking at the back, you get that wonderful bat profile here with the tall, almost Chrysler-esque looking rear fins. And again, these are for those retro rockets or something like that. The dual exhaust coming out the back ends, one on each side. Up front, of course, looks really good. Looks very much like the uh, Barris Batmobile or the Lincoln Futura if you want to go back in time to 1955. But again, really excellent work coming out of Polar Lights. And once painted, this will look wonderful on your shelf. Here we have the panel that makes up our floor pan and the underside of our chassis. Now up here you can see a lot of mounting holes in here for all the different components. Looks sort of like Swiss cheese, doesn't it? Underneath it is quite smooth. There is a logo on here which says trademark DC Comics. You've got your fuel cell which looks pretty tiny actually and a spare tire well here for inside the trunk. Again though, quite simplistic but should look really nice once you get that frame on there. So now speaking of the frame, let's see what that looks like. So here we have our frame and it's got that cross X brace in here, much like a 1950s Lincoln. Now turning it over you can see the mounting points for the frame for where it would meet up on that chassis. Uh, the front suspension, you've got your upper A-arms molded in place. Again, the framing in here is really excellent looking. Very nicely done. Not too much in the way of mold marks or anything like that. There is a connection point here that needs to be cleaned up from the parts tree that got broken off. But overall, I mean, this should clean up really nicely. And because it's separate, you could actually paint this as a semi-gloss black and then paint the floor underneath flat black. Now the model kit instructions suggest that you do a dry fit of the parts before you glue them together to see how they will all fit and to make sure there aren't any complications with that fit and finish. So here from the top you can see that I've added in the frame and the interior panel. Now turning upside down I notice there's two little buttons inside here which help you align that back panel in underneath. And then you can see that the frame here fits fairly nicely onto the body. And there is a little bit of a bar in front here, which will clip up underneath that cowling. So once again, this will end up being quite excellent. The fit seems very tight and very nice. Now here we have several parts trees which make up our Batmobile. And you can see that here we have our engine with the transmission. And we've got our inner fender aprons, we've got our hood, side door panels, the bat computer, the dashboard, the front, or maybe they're the rear coil springs, the manifolds here, and our interior. Now I thought the seats were glued in separately, but in fact they're actually molded in. Now I do believe there might be a headrest being glued in here, maybe that's what part 76 was. But let's take these up in the camera and see exactly what we're looking at. Let's start here. This looks really exciting. So we've got our door panels here. And what we are shown is the actual bat grappling hook with the extra wire feed here. So it's much like a fishing line with a gun on there. We've got the armrest, which is really cool. On this side, there's only the armrest and nothing else. But take a look at that neat da uh, bat dash. Dat bash. Okay, so we've got uh, Batman's speedometer and the other gauges up front here. And then probably a tracking computer or something like that. Oscilloscope, maybe. And then we've got the Bat microphone for that speaker that's out front. Look at the nice coils on the coil springs. Again, really excellent detail. And then there we've got that Bat computer. So that would be right in the center here. Again, really excellent looking components. Let's check out the rest of the interior. So there's our seats. Now what's interesting is this is pretty much like an ivory color plastic, whereas the interior is pure white. So that is quite interesting. Very interesting. Now here we've got the texture plate on the floor. So again, that could be an aluminum or even a steel color. There's the gear shift lever where that would end up going. Bat phone right here, fire extinguisher into the back. Again, really excellent detail on there. 
The only thing we've got here is that these tailpipes are quite smooth with the mufflers as well. Well, I guess they're supposed to be, right? You can see the long pins on here for mounting up underneath the car. Again, if on the bottom here we've got a couple of mold marks, you can easily sand those down. But overall, it looks really, really good. Let's take a look at the hood here. So this is very smooth. It's also got that neat little air scoop kind of thing on there. Underneath there is no fireproof matting, but there is a number right in the center and four mold marks. So you could fill those and sand them down and get rid of them. The hood is mo or the hinge is molded to the bottom of the hood, is what I'm trying to say. And then finally we've got those inner wheel aprons and the battery is molded in place. You got the upper shock towers, so again that's that Ford front IFS suspension underneath there. Then we've got our engine. You can see this is an automatic casing. So that little cover on the bottom would be there. So this could be a Ford C6 from the from back in the day, from 68. Same with the engine. So if you're looking for an engine like this, a good source might actually be that monogram Ford Torino. But again, I'm not too sure on that, so don't quote me there. But overall, I would really give these parts high marks for their level of detail and for their ease and access in putting in the actual cars. Our next four parts tree shows the engine components as well as the springs, the rear differential, and our mufflers. And then here we have some more engine and interior components. There's our firewall and the rest of our engine and interior and chassis components. So let's bring these up to the camera and check them out. Let's start with this one. This looks fun. So what do we have here? Well, it looks like we've got our fan, radiator hoses, spindles, as well as the shock absorbers. There's the spring shackles, and then we've got a bunch of our coil and engine bits, as well as our front timing chain cover and a shift lever, I do believe. Not 100% sure on all this. Front disc brakes and rear drum brakes. So again, some really nice work on here. The fins look nice. So do the little calipers up there. Yeah, really good. Not much in the way of flash, so that's always good. Flash! Ah! Okay, we've got our drive shaft. We've got our little mufflers here, as well as the differential and our springs. So I would say the detail on this is a bit softer than uh, some of the other cars that are out on the market. But overall, I mean, this should be uh, basically for ease and convenience of assembling a model. So not going into the heavy detail. So I was right. There are bat headrests for those seats. There's our differential rear cover. The pedals are like a race car style with the bar and them hinging at the tops. So there's our air cleaner. And like I said, this is very much like a Ford kind of Cobra type engine. Got our fire extinguisher as well as our exhaust manifolds and the bat steering wheel. Now, I think I said this looked like a 57 Ford steering wheel, but actually I was looking this over. It's very much like a 50 five Chevy steering wheel. So yeah, that's that's what that is. Oh, this is a brake master cylinder. Now that I turn it over, I can see really what it is. Did I turn it over? No, maybe I didn't. I don't know what I'm talking about. There's the belts and the pulleys as well. So again, really excellent work. Simplified, but with a little cleanup should it be nice. There we've got our firewall, got our radiator, and our lower A arms with the cross member and the tie rod right there. We also have the cylinder heads, radiator support wall. There's our transmission cover. Now this should be painted silver. There's our oil pan there. So again, oh, intake manifold. So again, really nice work. And uh, you can see the texture on the radiator. It's got the proper expansion tanks in there. Again, your biggest threat in here, bat fans, is your sink marks, which will all be taken care of with some sandpaper. There are some on the cylinder heads, so make sure you sand that down before gluing them to the engine block. Same as the manifold here. You want all these to be nice and flat so they mat up to that engine perfectly and not give you any complications or sit up a little bit or any of that kind of craziness. So again, we have some really nice parts to build our model. Next up, we've got our chrome components, and you can see the rear bumper, all those little bat spinners for the wheels, 
And then we've got our headlight bezels as well as the door latch handles and the front grille. Uh, I guess these are the actual headlight bezels. And then we've got our valve covers and the rear of the car and our really cool five spoke wheels on here and the exhaust tips as well. So bringing this up to the camera, again, you can see that the detail is very light. It is almost like a promotional car kind of thing. But overall, this will make a really nice looking comic book Batmobile. There is some fins on the uh, valve covers right there. Again, really, really good work for just how simple this kit is. At least there is some nice detail here. And it'll look good to get some chrome on the old Batmobile. Next up, we've got our transparent components. And there's a real treat on here that I didn't actually notice. The bat phone is actually molded in transparent red. So if you had a little LED and you wanted to light this car up with like LED headlights and all that, you could actually put one underneath this phone. And if you pushed a button or however you're going to lay that out, you could have the bat phone light up like it does on the TV show. <laughs> so again, that is really cool. So there's our lights and the uh, side marker lamps, I suppose, as well as that light that's underneath the the dome here, the siren. Then we've got our airplane style cockpit windshields and our front clear headlights. So let's just take a look at this. The bat phone even has the proper rotary dial on there. I <laughs> mean, check that out. That is awesome. Look at the tail fins on there as well. They've got texture into them. And the dome light has, of course, that mesh on there. So again, really cool stuff on this model. There's the transparent yellow. The only thing that's a bit of a detractant is the pins that they used. You can see right through there. So it might look better if it didn't have the pins, but what can you do? I didn't make that. <laughs> and again, look at those nice cockpit windows. Those are great. So you will have to put a little chrome around the edges or paint it on. But overall, this thing looks great with all these clear plastic bits. Next up, we have our tires. Now, these don't actually have any name brand on here, like Dunlop, Michigan, or Pirelli, but they do have a more modern type sports car tread on them. They're not quite something like the old Goodyear polyglass tires, which you would expect to see on this kit. But overall, I mean, a little bit of cleanup, and they should look quite nice. Here we have our decal sheet, and you've got the hood decal, which has the bat cowl on it, as well as a split. So that's, you would apply this where the hood uh, would open naturally. So this would be on the front of the car, and this would be on the hood. Now here we have all the little decals for the instrument panel, as well as the center console. So here's a picture of Commissioner Gordon, which you would put on that bat computer, as well as a little panel here. Not quite sure what that is. Now here on the driver's side, you got your speedometer and the oil pressure gauge and that sort of thing. And on the passenger side, you've got a big clock, actually. So, wow, I was wrong, but that's a huge clock. And uh, then you've got these little gauges as well. Now, I'm not really sure how you're going to get these little gauges inside that little bezel, but I wish you luck. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. Here is Batman and Robin as figures. So again, you can see there's Batman's front and back, his cape, the back of his head, the front of his head, and his two arms. And as for Robin, we have Robin's front, Robin's back, his cape, his two arms, and his head front and back. Now the question is, are you able to solve the Riddler's Riddle? If so, let us know in the comment section down below what the answer is. Let's take a look at Batman here. So again, we've got quite the comic book look. You've got the crest and the bat logo right in the center. You got the utility belt, which was yellow, a yellow fellow. There is a hole here which matches up with the dot on the back of the cape, just to put that all together. Look at the hands even have the little uh, bits on the bottom. I don't know what you'd call that on the glove. The bat face uh, looks uh, really nice. Now I should put a black wash into there so you can see it, but... Overall, you get the idea. There's the bat, back of the bat head. <laughs> okay, next up we have a Robin. Now, somewhere on here, there'll be a circle with an R. Yeah, that's right there. And again, the utility belt should be yellow. Now, there's little 
pegs in the back of his back. And again, that lines up with the dots on the back of the robe. There is a sink mark in there. So again, use your number 16 hobby blade just to smooth it out so that this doesn't actually pull away from the body here. There's his arms with the gloves. And again, there's the face. So overall, both figures look really excellent and should be nicely painted and should easily fit into those bat seats. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at our 1960s DC comic book Batmobile by Polar Lights. And if you want to see what great model kits we have for sale, don't forget to check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca. We've got TV, movie cars, and other great things down there. So, until next time, everybody, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video. Tune in next week for another thrilling video as we check out the Batman Forever Batmobile. Same bat time, same bat channel.